I've got uh, time to begin. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good to see everyone. I, uh, uh, <clears throat> you know, in the Church of Christ, we don't uh, uh, do testimonials, but we probably should. <clears throat> Excuse my voice. Um, I, uh, uh, most of you probably know <clears throat> what happened to me, but I'd like to give you a little bit of details, uh, make you appreciate if you're in good health, you know, that's, that means a lot. Um, I was in the hospital for about four week, four uh, days, and uh, I was working on a project uh, in War Acres. <clears throat> and uh, uh, this was a project that, um, this is a lady who has a dry cleaning business, and we, we painted on the uh, south side of her building to paint a, some graphics for her, and she called me and said, you've done such a great job, do you mind painting the east side and the north side? And I said, no, I don't mind, we'll come over and finish that. This was probably would have been a normal three hour, four hour job. But uh, uh, early on Friday morning, about 10 o'clock, I was trying to get up on scaffolding and the scaffolding really wasn't all that high, maybe about as high as that clock. Uh, and I was almost to the top of it. Uh, I was on an incline and I realized, realized too late, I did not fasten down the wheels real tight. You know, there's some levers down there that you push down on them and they'll really tighten up those wheels. Well, before I knew it, the scaffolding went one direction and I went the other direction. And I landed on my right side, my ribs. I didn't catch myself at all. <clears throat> and when I landed, I thought to myself, I, I'm really hurt. <laughs> I'm really hurt. But anyway, uh, a guy uh, that was across the street, I call him an angel, but he cussed like a sailor. Uh, he came up and he said, I saw what happened. Can I call the doctor and, or ambulance? And I said, no, I'm, I'm really just fine. I just knocked the wind out of me. And then I realized, no, I had, I'd done more than knock the wind out of myself. So <clears throat> anyway, he called the ambulance and they took me to Baptist and I stayed there four days. I had three broken ribs and they're still really sore. I had a collapsed lung and uh, my heart was in a, a, AFib. You know what that is? It's when it starts beating irregularly. It's not beating the way that it's supposed to. And uh, I thought, my goodness. Anyway, um, the doctors came in and looked at and took all these x-rays. And uh, he said, you have a collapsed lung. One of your lungs has collapsed. Uh, your heart is just not beating right. And he said, that could cause blood clot. That's a real serious thing. And so anyway, he, uh, um, he said, you're going to be here for a while. So anyway, I... I, I think at all this time, I think Carolyn had called the church office, and I, I think that's how you were probably notified, um, was through uh, the office, and uh, um, <laughs> I, I, uh, I may not be able to get through all of this, but anyway, um, uh, you guys started praying. That's why I'm here, really. Uh, you communicated to God that Bob needs some help. And, you know, my lung is back <clears throat> to normal. My heart is back to normal. My ribs are just not back to normal. So, <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> that's, that's my testimonial. <clears throat> I was going to, I was going to try. I still have a little fluid in my lungs, and so that's... Um, that's kind of what is why my voice sounds a little funny. But it doesn't, you know, it doesn't hurt anymore. Let's try um, 971. Now, if I quit singing, you guys keep going, okay? 971. 
Restore my spirit, Lord, it needs restored. My heart is weary, please help me, dear Lord. I stand in need of more strength from your word. Renew my love, rebuild my faith, oh, restore my soul. Revive the courage, Lord, it needs restored. I might this empty, refill it, dear Lord. Replace all doubts and fears with faith. So bold, renew my love, rebuild my faith, so oh, restore my soul. Uh, let's try 949. <clears throat> I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. All right. Anyone remember what we were studying, where we were? James, how about James? We are in chapter 4. Everyone doing okay? I think I'm going to ask Joe. I, I meant to lead us in a prayer, and so I just thought of it. Would you do that for us, Joe? Pray with me. Heavenly Father, we are thankful for your life for us. Father, help us to take all that in. Know that you died for us personally, each individual. Set us in mind uh, you sent your son. Father, we're thankful for the salvation we have because of his death. Father, we're thankful that Bob is well or doing better, and we pray that he be able to heal his ribs. We're thankful that his heart is back beating well. And Father, we just ask that you heal him. Father, we pray that uh, we would, all those who are waiting on tests, have the best of speech. Father, we ask for good results. Father, we pray that you give Jim Marge's daughter as she's continuing to medical problems with this brain tumor. And Father, we pray that you tell him to go down and he would be well. For all the others who are hurting, and Father, we'll pray that you would be with Don and Pauline McFarland, and Don has been put on hospital. We pray that you would be with them. Father, we're thankful for your word, and especially uh, the book of James. Father, as we study today, Father, we, we pray that you would teach us to tame our tongues. Teach us uh, to listen more than we talk. Jesus, give us wisdom. Amen. James chapter 4. What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come? from your desires that battle within you. You want something, but don't get it. You kill and covet, but you cannot have what you want. You quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with the wrong motives, that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. You adulterous people, don't you know that friendship with the world is hatred towards God? 
Anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. Or do you think scriptures say without reason that the spirit he calls to live in us envies intensely, but he gives us more grace? That is why scriptures say God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Submit yourselves then to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Come near to God, and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts. You double-minded, grieve, mourn, and wail. Change your laughter to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will lift you up. Brothers, do not slander one another. Anyone who speaks against his brother or judges him speaks against the law and judge, judges it. When you judge the law, you are not keeping it, but sitting in judgment on it. There is only one lawgiver and judge, the one who is able to save and destroy. But you, who are you to judge your neighbor? Now listen, you who say tomorrow, today or tomorrow, we will go to this or that city, spend a year there, carry on business and make money. Why? You do not even know that what will happen to you tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if it is the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. As it is, you boasting and brag, all such boasting is evil. Anyone then who knows the good he ought to do and doesn't do it, sins. What do you think he's talking about here? And we put it in today's application. What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle from within? I'm sorry? Selfishness. Selfishness. We kind of live in a me world. Everything is about me. If it doesn't make me happy, it's probably not any good. That's, that's, that's a good analogy. Any other things? What, what kind of quarrels and fighting? We take for granted a lot of things. Absolutely. Yeah. We take a lot of things for granted. What else? You know, sometimes we can't see the big picture. You know, we're, we're kind of stuck in a rut on what's, what's good for me or my family and all, but we have to see a bigger picture. And a lot of times we, we, that happens to us in our, our prayer life is uh, we only ask for what we can see and we, and we really need to ask, you know, in fact, we'll, we just read that we need to know it should be God's will instead of our own will. What about when he says, I, I like this part, um, you do not have because you do not ask. When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with the wrong motives, that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. Isn't that what we just read about? And then he goes about not only that, but they are even boasting and bragging in that. Or do you think scripture says without reason that the spirit he calls to live in us in, envies intensely, but he gives us more grace? That is why the scripture says God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Who are the proud and who are the humble, do you think? Depends on the day. You, you probably see it all the time and, uh, you know. I, I used to run sport. Uh, I used to do track. Is Gary here this morning, Barnmore? We're about the same age, and we, uh, we never competed against each other, but we could have if our schools would have been in the same class. And he's, he's always asking me, uh, what was your quarter mile time, or what was your long jump distance? And, uh, you know, we kind of kid each other back and forth. But those were many years ago, but 
in the world of sports, there's a lot. I guess the more you brag, the more you're looked up to, you know. And so you have a lot of that going on. Yes. Yes. comment was made, the proud think they did it all themselves. But the humble know, really, where the appreciation needs to go to. Submit yourselves, then, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Come near to God, and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts. You double-minded, grieve, mourn, and wail. Change your laughter to mourning, and your joy to gloom. In fact, this verse I have it underlined. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will lift you up. How do we do that? How do we humble ourselves? Submit to his will. When we have a problem, go to him. Excellent. What else? Yes. Asking for help is an action. Yes. Asking for help is an act of... Humility, yes. Be very thankful, very thankful. Did I see a hand, Daryl? Yes, yes. Pride, pride can be our downfall a lot of times. <laughs> Anyone else have their hand up? I always kind of look way over here in the corners because I know you guys have something to say. So stand up if you have to. All right, let's keep moving. Brothers, do not slander one another. Anyone who speaks against his brother or judges him speaks against the law and judges it. When you judge the law, you are not keeping it, but setting in judgment on it. There is only one lawgiver and judge, the one who is able to save and destroy. But you, who are you to judge your neighbor? Where, where's that fine line of judgment? Yes. Right. Um, right. I, I, in fact, I think that's where the judgment, the line is. Any other comments? Absolutely. Yes, I think that's a good point. Any other comments? Don't forget, Ron, I'll be calling on you here in just a little bit, okay? <laughs> now listen, you who say tomorrow, today or tomorrow, we will go to this or that city, spend a year there, carry on business and make money. Why do you not even know what will happen tomorrow? Why do you not even know what will happen tomorrow? What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if it is the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. As it is, you boast and brag. All such boasting is evil. Anyone then who knows the good he ought to do and doesn't do it, sins. That doesn't say that we shouldn't plan. Right. Right. Absolutely. I like the, that term, partnership, yes. Never do it without God's help or expect God, pray to God to help you and give you insight, really. Any other comments on basically being here for a short while? The doctor told me, he said, if you would have landed on your neck or head, you would not be here. You know, when 200 pounds hits that cement, that's 
<laughs> that, that, that hurts. All right, we're going to go on into five because I wanted to finish up with James. And I think five has some great, great uh, thoughts for us. We can come back and discuss both four and five before the class is over. Now listen, you rich people, weep and wail because of the misery that is coming upon you. Your wealth has rotted and moth has eaten your clothes. Your gold and silver are corroded. Their corrosion will testify against you and eat your flesh like fire. You have hoarded the wealth in the last days. Look, the wages you failed to pay the worker, workmen who mowed your fields are crying out against you. The cities of the harvester have reached the ears of the Almighty. You have lived on earth in luxury and self-indulgence. You have fattened yourselves in the day of slaughter. You have condemned and murdered innocent men who were not opposing you. Be patient then, brothers, until the Lord's coming. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop and how patient he is for autumn and the spring rains. You too be patient and stand firm because the Lord's coming is near. Don't grumble against each other, brothers, or you will be judged. The judge is standing at the door. Brothers, as an example of patience in the face of suffering, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. As you know, we consider blessed those who have persevered. You have heard of Job's perseverance and have seen what the Lord finally brought about. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Above all, my brothers, do not swear, not by heaven or by earth or by anything else. Let your yes be yes and your no be no, or you will be condemned. Is any one of you in trouble? He should pray. Is anyone happy? Let him sing songs of praise. Is any one of you sick? He should call on the elders of the church to pray over him and anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise him up. If he has sinned, he will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. Elijah was a man just like us. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. Again he prayed, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth produced its crops. My brothers, if one of you should wander from the truth, and someone should bring him back, remember this. Whoever turns a sinner from the error of his way will save him from death and cover over a multitude of sins. Anything, well, I was going to ask, uh, will anything jump out at you, but I, I, uh, I, we'll get to that. I like this very first part that he says, now listen, you rich people, weep and well because of the misery it's your wealth. You know, we sometimes place our values at the, in the wrong place. And here he's pointing out gold and silver. Their corrosion will testify against you and eat your flesh like fire. You have hoarded wealth in the last days. Look, the wages you failed to pay the worker men who mowed your fields are crying out against you. The cries of the harvester have reached the ears of the Lord Almighty. You have lived on earth in luxury and self-indulgence. You have fattened yourself in the day of slaughter, and you have condemned and murdered innocent men who were not opposing you. What, what bit of nugget of wisdom can we take out of that? Just that, that those few verses. I don't want to depend on the wealth. I, I think you said the same thing, though. We can't depend upon our wealth. And... Uh, I think that's a good point. 
I always, uh, and I like this other part he talks about, um, uh, about the wages you fail to pay your workers. I, um, I usually, in some of my bigger projects, I work with a team of artists. And uh, I probably, I'm not going to tell you the city, but I was working in a city once, uh, a small town really, and uh, I was working with about five helpers and it was a big project. And we got through and the guy said, well, I don't, uh, I can't pay you right now. I need to, I'll have to mail you the check. Well, days went on and on <laughs> and I kept calling and eventually he kept, he with answering my uh, phone. And so I never did get paid. Or every time I go through that town, I think I ought to go in there and take that image off the wall. And, uh, <laughs> but I paid my helpers. Don't you feel like if they, they came on board because of you and the buck stops with you. And so I, I didn't get paid, but they got paid. And I always <laughs> felt, I always wanted to work for people like that, that whether, you know, they may have a hardship being the boss and all, but uh, at least my helpers did get paid. You've probably been in situations uh, yourself that way. But uh, don't go through hinting. Oh, I shouldn't have told you that. <laughs> the lesson is always pay your debt. Always pay your debt. Always pay Treat your debt. Right. Yes. Treat people right. Treat people like you would like to be treated. All right, let's go on. Verse 7. Be patient then, brothers, until the Lord's coming. See how the farmer waits on the land to yield its valuable crop, and how patient he is for the autumn and spring rains. You too be patient and stand firm, because the Lord's coming is near. Don't grumble against each other, brothers, or you will be judged. The judge is standing at the door. How are we patient? How are we patient? How are ways we can be patient, I guess? Right. I was, uh, I'm from Walters, and it's in Cotton County. And uh, I have a, he used to be one of my students. His name is Jimmy Kinder, and he's a big farmer now. In fact, he's a well-known farmer in that part of the state. Uh, in fact, he's so well-known, he got invited to Washington, D.C. to be the voice for, for Oklahoma and the Oklahoma farmers. I think they picked one farmer out of the state, and they picked Jimmy. And he's got big equipment and big fields to plow and everything. But he's made me appreciate patience. He's made me appreciate what the farmers go through. And if we lose our farmers, we're in, we're in trouble. Uh, and I always think, uh, and he was telling me, he said, uh, we don't have any electric vehicles on the farm. You know, I'm thinking, oh. <laughs> yeah. So I, w I thought, well... And uh, he says, and, in fact, he texted me the other day, and he said, we've had 60 days of no rain. That, and our temperature's hovering around 100 degrees. So I don't know what that's going to do for our wheat crops, our cotton crops, and all that. But we always need to keep the farmers um, in our prayers because they, they do go through a lot. Any comments? That's right. That's right. Cookie Town. I really, uh, I thought that was made up. When I first moved down there, I thought, that's not, that can't be a cookie town. But it is. Oklahoma has a cookie town. What do they sell there? I think it's just a wide place in the road. I don't know that it, they sell anything. <laughs> All right. Let's get over a little bit farther. Let's talk about the prayer of the faithful. Is any one of you in trouble? He should pray. Is anyone happy? Let him sing songs of praise. Is any one of you sick? He should call on the elders of the church to pray over him and anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. 
And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise him up. If he has sinned, he will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous man or woman, I would put in there, is powerful and effective. What about that? When, I, uh, when the doctor came in and took an x-ray and my lung had expanded back out, he said, science cannot explain that. He said, I, he said what's happened? And I said, well, I think my brothers and sisters in Christ found out I was in the hospital and I needed prayer. And I, I told him, I said, it's the prayers. It's the prayers to God that expanded that lung. And so, yes. I've always kind of had a problem with that one verse. Is the prayer of a righteous man tells much? He's righteous. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good point. We just it's something to strive towards, though. Yes. Did I see another hand? If you even scratch your ear, I will call on you. So, I mean, we're at times when we're happy, yes, when we pray, when someone's sick, we pray. Um, Joe, have you ever, I'm going to put you on the spot, um, have you ever anointed anyone with oil? Uh, I used to be an elder at the Bethany Church, and I did that, and it was a little, I didn't know how to take it, but I felt like it's as scriptural as it can be, but I, I wasn't sure about it. Can you tell us your experience? I can't remember. We made a hospital visit. I can't remember who was with me. I can't remember the patient. I just remember them asking if we would pray over them and anoint them with oil, and we didn't have oil. The nurse happened to be in the room. But I have oil in the nurse's room. Really? I have no idea what kind of oil it was, but we put oil on it. Male patient, that's what it was. He rubbed oil on his arms and on his hands. And prayed over him while we were doing that. Yeah, I, I had never seen it done, and I, I just kind of, I was given that little, it was a little vial they gave me, and I, I did the very same thing, and I thought, well, I'm gonna, while I'm doing this, I'm going to be praying. So. And it worked. It worked. It worked. He's still living. Joe Carruthers, anyone know Joe Carruthers? He's a, um, he still lives in Beth. I think he lives in Luther, but he works in Bethany at one of the retirement centers. And he always brings it up periodically, you know. So. You know, uh, I'd like to answer who is righteous. And I think righteous man is, is living according to the scripture. He prays constantly. He has communication with God and the Holy Spirit. I think that makes Yes. It's not what we're doing, it's what God does to us. Yes. Yes. Agreed. So I think there there is righteousness in the Bible. We I think it's a good you brought up a good point. Any other thoughts on that? Yeah, if he if he doesn't, we're in we're in trouble. Yes, I think it's hard to pray with the right heart. Good point. I, I had to a... be right with God. That's the thing. It's like you have to be right with God and depend on your heart with God. Right. God forgives sin. Genuinely ask and he will forgive. I had, uh, I've heard a brother in the faith call it uh, a pocket watch sin. 
He says some people have a, a sin that they keep it like a, a pocket watch. It's in your pocket out of sight. And, but God sees all things, you know. So, uh, yeah, I think you brought up some good points. Go back to that verse, if it be his will. Right. Yes. Did I see someone raise their hand over here? Oh, right here. Yep. All right. Isn't that the truth? All right. Um, let's get into this part of it. I'm just kind of curious what your comments might be. Um, and the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise him up. If he has sinned, he will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous man is powerful and effective. How do, we, how do you inter interpret that uh, confessing of sins? How, how do you? L let me tell you a little story and give you a little bit of time to think. Um... When Carolyn and I were going to the Bethany Church, I overheard a brother in Christ. He was complaining about his job. And uh, he had just taken on a job of delivering auto parts. And he had to deliver, deliver them all around the state. And he had to, to deliver them at night uh, in the evening. So after 10 o'clock, he was on the clock. And he would drive all over the state delivering auto parts because they had to have them by 7 o'clock in the morning. And I, I heard it over and over again that he was lamenting that fact. And I said, okay, um, I, I'll go with you. I, will that help you? If you? Will it help you stay awake uh, if, I, if someone rode with you? Yeah, you know, that would be great. I'd love that. I said, well, you know, I'm a good listener, and I can, we can talk about things. I said, well, I'll go on one condition. And he said, what's that? I said, let's just confess our sins to each other. And he says, you stay home then. He, <laughs> he, he, he didn't want to do that. <laughs> so, you have to be pretty close to someone to be able to tell them, you know, hey, brother, I'm struggling with something. But I think that's, that's biblical, too, that we need to. Pardon? Yes, yeah, it is. All right. Elijah was a man just like us. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain for three and a half years. Again, he prayed, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth produced its crops. My brothers, if one of you should wander from the truth, and someone should bring him back, remember this, whoever turns a sinner from the air of his way will save him from death and cover a multitude of sins. Can you give me an example of that? Or what, how do you interpret that? How do we bring people back? Okay. I think that's a good, I think it's an excellent point, right on track. 
Any other thoughts? Repentance is the key, yes. I think you're right, Tom, uh, on that. Um, I think there's different ways. I, I'd like to share with you a, a story that I think you have to really be honest with people. You don't go in and, and as a know-it-all, you go in a lot of times and say, let's talk, let's talk about something. I think there's ways to do that. I think the church has actually probably done it in a lot of wrong ways because you can run people off. But uh, I like the fact that if you're talking to a brother who's erring is to talk with him in love and talk with him in private. I don't think that needs to be a private, uh, be a public situation. I I've done that several occasions and I'll be honest with you, I'm kind of batting about 50-50. They sometimes do, and sometimes they don't. Brethren, even if one, anyone is caught in any trespass, you are spiritual. Restore such one in a spirit of gentleness. Yes. I think that's the key word, gentleness. Yes. point. Very good point. Yes. None of us are perfect, right. I think it's a constant striving, as you said. Any others? Your children may be away from the Lord, but that doesn't mean you need to. You need to keep doing that and be an example for them. You're back. Well, um, we're pretty much finished with James. Any comments on any of it? Maybe, maybe there was something you wanted to get off your chest and, and didn't. Yeah, now's your chance. Let me close this out with a prayer. Our God and our Father who art in heaven, just thank you for being right here with us this morning and that we can be with brothers and sisters of like faith. Thank you for the time that we've had together. Thank you for James and you speaking through, the Spirit speaking through him and helping us in our walk with you and your son. Thank you for allowing your son to come and die on the cross for us. Thank you for the love and the examples he has set for us. Be with us, dear Father, as we go this week that others may see you living in us. Thank you, dear Father, for the incredible country that we live in. Once you, we would ask you to bless and watch over 
the men and women, women serving in our military. Thank you for the leaders of this land, and we pray that you will watch over them and be with them as they make decisions that affect us all. Your Father, just as we go through the rest of our service, may it be accordance to your will and pleasing in your sight. In Jesus' name, amen. Earl?